remember to like and subscribe. Hi, it's Jay with Kinetic, and today we're gonna to be talking about Yamaha's Monitor Mix. This is a simple app that can be used with cell phones or tablets, and it'll work with your Yamaha CL or QL console, and will let you create personal monitor mixes for any artists that come up to stage. That way they have a personal mix in front of them that they can control for their monitor. It's a great tool, I love it, and I'm gonna break it down. If you don't know already how to set up a wireless network, click the link above. The chapters for this video can be found in the timestamps in the description to take you straight to any of the chapters I'm gonna mention. So, the chapters in this video are, chapter one, this is a mock setup overview. Chapter two is the iPad mount that I really like, a way to hold these. Chapter three, downloading the app. Chapter four, some best practices. Chapter five would be the intro to the app. Chapter six would be a quick, a quick demo. Chapter seven would be grouping within the app. Chapter eight would be number of visible faders and settings. Number nine would be stereo panning in the app. This one gets missed a lot, so check that out, definitely. Chapter 10 would be a couple more best practices, and chapter 11 is my closing thoughts. Again, all the timestamps for these are found in the description below. So for today's kind of overview, I want you guys to see this setup. I have a wireless mic. I have a Meyer UPA on the ground, and if you look, that's kind of an old school trick right there. Roll of gaff tape, wedging up the UPA. And I have my guitar. So this is really cool. This is an old gooseneck stand mount I bought for iPads on Amazon. It comes with a bunch of different stuff. So it comes with a mount actually to go over your console, and it comes with different clips here to fit different sized iPads and cell phones. Super good value. So this gooseneck itself can not only hook up to a straight mic stand or any mic stand. You do need a Euro adapter, so it accepts this kind of thread right here. Also, it comes with a table clamp for that stand, which I use quite often. Again, this clamp is one of my favorite things. If you see, during shows sometimes, I'll have that clamp and mount right over my console, how it is here. From the back, you see the clamp just clips to can tighten it down a little bit but to most tabletops and right over the top of your console i'm in no way endorsed or paid to promote this i just found this a really simple cheap thing to have and i love it and i get asked a lot about it so moving on so here's a console that uh, everything's hooked up to and there's my wireless router in this video we are just going over the monitor mix app some best practices and some things i find a lot of people miss for a more in-depth look at how to set up a wireless network with your QL5, at least a simple look, click the link above. The Yamaha Monitor Mix app is available for iOS and Android. Here's my Galaxy phone with the Monitor Mix app right here already installed. Quick note on the iPad though, so we'll move that. If I go search. And it pops right up. Here's something kind of small I wanted to show you. So, always make sure your iPad is the current version and updated. If you hadn't, you might not always see monitor mix here. Another thing is in filters, so if you don't see it right away, you could go into your filters and you may have, your version may only iPad or iPhone only, they fix that, but if it doesn't pop up right away, check your filters. Anyway, it's right here. Some people will tell you, you can simply tell the artist, hey, download this app before you come in today and log on to this Wi-Fi address and get working. That absolutely works, but what I found is if you invest a little bit, maybe get some cheap tablets or iPads and have them set up, waiting in the stage position so you're going to get a stage plot from your artist you have your monitor set up the way your artists want i think implementing an ipad or a device into that stage plot is going to save you tons of time 
on soundcheck. If it's already ready to go for them and they just sit down and they could start touching stuff, you are saving yourself a ton of time during soundcheck. Now, let's dive in on the app. All right, so again, I totally recommend you already having this set up for your artist in his stage plotted position. So from the start, I'm going to hit this. As the engineer, I'm gonna make sure this is set up for the artist ahead of time. Select our console, connect. And then, this is really important, you select your mix ahead of time. That way, nobody is tempted to adjust other people's mixes. They don't get confused and alter other mixes. So you assign what they're controlling now. We're gonna assign this mix position as main vocal. Done. And as you can see, this is a mock kind of setup I made for the purposes of this tutorial. Here's our drum set, guitar, some guitar effects. And by the way, I'm running my guitar into the console clean, and I'm going to show you guitar clean and then guitar simulated because I actually have some simulated guitar effects in the console. If you want to check that out, click the link above. Moving on, here's some mics. Here is our main vocal and reverb for that. I wanted you to see that they can have effects control if you as the engineer routed the effects in that way. So I have the returns going to channels and then backing tracks. Cool, so now our app is open. I'm gonna do a quick demo with me as the artist. First thing I'm gonna do, bring myself up some backing tracks and bring my mic up. Check, 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 one, two, potato, one, two. Some people say, hey, hey, hey. I like saying potato, just because I like being different. And a little verb on that, check, potato. And again, if you route your effects returns to a channel, you can get those in here, and that way your artist can adjust their effects. And the effects within that mix. And the guitar. Again, my guitar is synced clean into the DI, into the console. So this is clean. Now, one of the effects that I have patched here is actually Guitar Amp Simulator. This is built into the console. They're not that great, but they work in a pinch. And if you want to check that out, I got a link above. And now I'm going to bring this in. And our artist is happy with the mix. Now, over here, this is his monitor's overall level. I want more of all of it. There you go. Just noticed that this pushed the camera out of frame. Sorry about that. Another cool thing I wanted you guys to see is the app's ability to group. If somebody's familiar with the app and they want to arrange it in their own way, one thing you can do is you can consolidate maybe all of these drum tracks, right? So I'm gonna click group. I'm going to select kick, snare, hat, and my overheads, and the group button. And we are gonna recall this entire group. Drums. And done. If I tap the button, I can consolidate that group. And this almost acts like a DCA, because I can now splash this group open or consolidate this group here. Again, now the group opens, and now the group consolidates, and within that mix, I can control all the drums here. Open, close, all of it. Another cool things are within the settings menu here. You could set the sensitivity to your faders, where they cap out, but also right here, the number of visible faders you see on the screen. It starts off with eight, but you can move it 
to where now you have 16. It can become a bit cluttered and if you see the drum track is still grouped and I can open up the drums again if I want to do like a DCA splash with that. But now I have 16 faders visible to the artist. And we'll set this back to eight. Another thing I wanted to go over that I haven't seen is that you do have the ability to set up stereo. So you need to route it stereo in the console first and I'll show you that in a minute, but launching the app again, selecting our console, connect. And as you can see, mix three and four are together and it just gives you the first name of the first mix but these are stereo, mix three and four is now a stereo mix, done. And now you have the pan option. Now look, if I select, it's gonna say pan link is on, pan editing is not available. Now, so the way that you get stereo control on the app is that you need to set up a stereo mix. Now, I have a full video on the full routing capabilities of this console. You can click that link above. But just for this, I'm gonna show you how to do a, a stereo mix. So, setup, bus setup, and now mix three and four is going to be my left and my right monitors for my artist. I'm gonna simply hit stereo. Now, when I launch the app, it's going to say mix three slash four. Now, if pan link is set, and I'll show you the error code again on the screen, it's gonna say pan link unaccessible, right? So, you may have set that up before. Quick way to get back to it, set up, bus set up, find your, your stereo mix that you're messing with, so mix three, four, and then shut pan link off. Now, you can get panning within the app control. Pan here, pan here. And now if I had two, if I had two monitor wedges on the floor, one left, one right, I could get a true stereo image out of that, right? And same with in-ears. Here, and this is our guitar position. And boom, he can mix at the same time that this gentleman can mix. This is on iOS and this is on Android. So I wanna leave you guys with little nuggets of knowledge. Uh, the demos I've been doing all day today have been with a Meyer UPA set up as a wedge, but you can also do it with sure PSMs and 215s. Here's the thing though. If they're setting up their own mix and they're setting up their own in-ears, most artists aren't very conscious of this knob and their overall level. They just kind of move it around and they're happy where they're happy, right? Well, here again, as a monitor engineer, you need to be insanely careful with protecting their ears. You are shooting sound straight into the membrane of their ear, right? So, having them set it up on their own, I guess that's cool and that works, a lot of people do it. But what I like to do, and what you should always do if they do, is the knobs, when they're happy, when they're, they don't need to go any further up, max out their knob. So you're gonna adjust your, your overall mix volume so their knob is maxed out, that's what it is. Now, why that? Obviously, you're gonna have compressors kind of kicking things down, you're trying to do your best job to protect their ears. But I had an artist, had one of these on, he fell on the stage and knocked the dial over. Luckily he was cool because when he hit the dial, it moved it to the furthest position that it already set so I didn't blow his ears out. This can happen, this is live entertainment. So my closing thoughts, I think the Yamaha Monitor Mix app is great. It's gonna help a lot of people with quick sound checks and kind of get things like that, but it is in no way a replacement for the monitor engineer at all. The monitor engineer needs to monitor a lot of things, including their mixes, stereo panning, dynamics, EQ. They also need to protect the artist's ears, right? So 
The artist isn't thinking things like that, like what if I accidentally slam a mic or fall and knock the knob over? They're not thinking about any, any of that. that. The monitor engineer is doing that, that is their job. I've done that for a long time. Monitor engineers, they, uh, they get a lot of flack. Honestly, front of house ends up taking all the glory and the monitor engineer works his ass off and is kind of looked at as a second tier position when in reality, it's one of the hardest jobs in the audio world. So again, it's great, but it's in no way a replacement for the monitor engineer. So have a great day. Remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Now, some people will tell you, oh, you can just tell fucking fly. Ah. So, some people will tell you 